everything you know about ice is wrong. Hi, my name is Hunter Wolfley, and I am a scientist at Colorado High School. Could it be true that different frozen liquids like popsicles and ice cream actually have extremely varying melting points? And if so, which one melts the slowest? Have you ever had a delicious frozen sundae, yo, and found that it melted before you could even begin? and then realized that in your delicious Diet Coke, the ice just won't seem to melt? Well, what if this was all just not in your head, and that different frozen things actually melt at different rates? Could these liquids actually have separate melting times? I'm here to investigate. I hypothesize that if the test is actually done, it'll probably be the water that melts first. And then lastly being the other frozen liquids due to their odd content of sugars and stuff. <sighs> well, let's go to an expert and find out through experiments. I'm here at one of the most advanced technological institutes in America to see if my hypothesis is correct. All right, guys. Let's go inside. It's unlocked. Am I at the right place? Oh, you must be Hunter. How you doing? I like this guy already. I'm here with world-renowned scientist for helping kids with their summer experiments, Bobathy J. And he's here to help me devise an experiment. So, um, uh, I hear you've developed a way to test if different frozen, melty, tasty, summertime liquids melt at different faster, slower rates and stuff. Uh, yes, we have uh, devised an experiment to test if uh, different frozen liquids have significantly varying melting rates. Uh, what we will do is take six different liquids and pour 100 milliliters of each into identical cups. These liquids will be water, a salt water solution, a sugar water solution, pomegranate juice, orange juice, and ice cream. Uh, these will all roughly represent in any and all possible frozen liquid foods. We will then fully freeze these and then afterward place them outdoors and uh, begin a timer to collect uh, melting rate data. One hour into the process, we will remove the remaining ice into strainers, so we can exactly calculate the time it melts when it disappears through the mesh. Wait for you to get it on your own. X go deliver to you. Knock knock. Open up the door. It's real. With the nonstop pop out and stainless steel. Go hard, getting busy with it. But I got such a good heart that I'm. So it's been one full day. Let's see the results. Well, I'm a uh, hunter. We uh, did your experiment, and uh, the results are quite shocking. Both the orange juice and pomegranate juice immediately showed signs of melting. Surprisingly, about two hours and two minutes later, the sugar water fully melted. 28 minutes later, the pomegranate and ice cream melted as well. The water seemed to be the least melted, while the fibers of the orange juice were keeping the ice together. The salt had fully melted 11 minutes after that. 29 minutes later, I marked the orange juice's melt since it stopped being cold on touch. The regular ice was still far from melting. I did not mark its time. So what you're telling me is it took two hours and two minutes for the sugar water to melt, two hours and 30 minutes for the pomegranate and ice cream to melt, two hours and 41 minutes for the salt water to melt, 
and three hours and 10 minutes for the orange juice to melt. Hello, we'd like to thank you, Mr. Babathy J, for uh, helping me with this experiment. Well, I guess there is a significant difference between the melting rates of different frozen liquids out there. So, next time you're thinking about what popsicle or ice cream to get, look at the sugar concentration. It was the first thing to melt. <sighs> also, I, diabetes is a thing, so watch, watch the sugar concentration anyway. All that I have in here is ice, actually. This is all ice, just... Just all ice. It's all I... Oh, that's cold. Oof. Should not have done that on my couch. My mom's gonna kill me. Shit. Ice! Science. This is serious. This is science. Do it for science, you monster. For science. <laughs>